Have you ever been exchanged for someone else? Have you ever been replaced? Have you ever felt being replaced? Which means, someone telling you, I don't need you anymore, I have someone else for your place. How have you felt? If that have already happened to you, how did you feel? Many go through this. Many times, I remember in school, everybody remember in school that moment of the game, that they would pick the teams, so they would queue up every student, and then two were separated to choose the teams. You come, and then you, and then you, and always there was one that was not chosen, because he was not good in that sport, not because he was a bad person, but just did not practice that sport very well. And sometimes someone would be left out. Sometimes during the game, they would tell you, you, come out, and someone else come in their place. The vast majority already been through that. Many have been exchanged in relationships when they were betrayed. And the worst pain of betrayal is that sensation of thinking. Was I not sufficient for you? You had to search outside something that you have not found in me? I was not enough? I was not good enough for you? Many have been through the replacement at work. I don't need you anymore. They were fired. Someone else was placed in their place. And it goes on. The pain of replacement is very great because it affects our essence, our being. Sometimes it reflects a reality that we were not good enough, not in the case of betrayal, I don't speak about that, but I speak in the case on we not being able to meet the expectations on the employer, the company, the team that we're working with. And sometimes we don't meet those expectations. And sometimes it's just an injustice. However it is, to be replaced is not a pleasant thing. It's not something that people receive with joy or happiness. Very well. But did you know that that is what happens the most with God in this world? It's what happens the most in regards to Him from people to find replacement for God. Every time you see a person placing their future, their hope, for example, in the money, they place all their hope. Sometimes you listen to a person, you see a person, they don't say it clearly, but you see that they deposit their hope in the riches. They think, they live, they breathe the following idea. I need to have a lot of money, because when I have money, I will be happy, I will be respected, I will be able to do everything I want, I won't depend on anyone, and etc. So the person makes out of money some kind of God, an expectation of God, because this is what is expected from God, that He may supply, sustain us, hold us, guarantee our future, and protect us. But only Him can do that. Money cannot. Money can do a lot of things. Money is good, was created by God, but it cannot do all things. Just like science. People place all the expectation on the knowledge. So they go ahead, they read, they study, they research, they prepare themselves, they do courses, graduate on this and on that, because they want to embrace the knowledge, because they think like this, if I am a capable person, I will be able to be respected, to have a good job, to earn a lot of money, and etc. And again, knowledge, science, it comes from God. God is the author of science. But what I'm talking about here is the person to replace God, the creator, for a creation. Something created by Him. Money was created by God. But when you place money as your God, you make out of Him a replacement for God. All science comes from God. He's the fountain of all intelligence. But when you make out of knowledge your God, 
you replace God in your life. And you make out of the theories, studies, your dependence. But the list is very vast. There are people that place the stars in the place of God. Oh, if my sign says this or that, I will follow what my signs say. They follow the stars. There are people who place celebrities. They are gurus. They search for gurus. Nowadays, the profession of guru, coach, this type of careers that place a person like a spiritual guide. There are people that don't give one step ahead without seeking an advice on their spiritual guide. They become dependent on another person, a guru, a coach. There are times that the person don't want to belong to a religion, as they call it, a traditional one, isn't it? Christianism is a traditional religion, as many other religions out there. As it became a trend to say, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. So what does the person want? They want to use out of the spiritual practices but eliminate God from the equation. And then it comes in those practices of metaphysics, those practices of meditation, of hypnotism. Do you know it? Those practices of astrology, law of attraction, and all that the people keep on creating, men keep on inventing ways to take benefits out of faith, the spiritual benefits to themselves, but without commitment with God. So they take God out of the equation, but they use what God created. For example, faith is something that God created. The mind is something that God created. No other creature has a brain, the intellectual capacity the human has. God made us out of his likeness and image and place in us an intelligence. So what many people do? I want to develop the power of the mind. So they believe and they develop the power of the mind. I want to dedicate myself to the power of the mind because the mind is this, is that. The neural language because I'm going to learn how to speak, how to attract things. All this God has created. But people want to become experts on the creation and to leave the creator on the side. Just like the person who wants to get married. Actually, they want a person, but they don't want to get married. They want someone, but they want to reject the marriage, which was the creation of God. God created the man, the woman, the affection, need. No, I don't want to get married. Marriage is outdated. Marriage is oppression, but they will stay with someone else. They want the benefits of what God created. The companionship the life of two people together, but they don't want to get married. Are you understanding how many ways God have been replaced by the human being? Now, how do you think that God feels in this situation? That's why the first of the Ten Commandments is, you will love your God, your Lord, with all your strength. You will not have other gods before you. And most of people, they disobey the first of the Ten Commandments. If you disobey the first, which is the greatest commandment, as Jesus said, out of all commandments, this is the greatest. You're not going to have other gods, but you're going to love God with all your strength. So it cannot be anyone else. Now imagine the others. He said that in Isaiah, later you can read Isaiah 45, 46, you see a way that God expresses exactly what I'm telling you, how he wants the people to have faithfulness, loyalty towards him. He says several times the same thing, but with different words. He says like this, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. 
Isaiah 45 and 6. Isaiah 46 and 9, he says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Do you believe in this? So maybe, without you noticing, without you wanting that, because that happened to me, I didn't have this understanding. Without me noticing, without the intention of doing it, you created a replacement for God in your life. And you have been serving this God created by you, this Lord created by you. What should you do? You should get rid of that, take your heart out of that, your attention out of that, and to turn to the only and true God and to be faithful to Him because He will supply all that you want, all that you have been searching in the God fabricated in this world, He will supply to you way more than you can imagine or desire. But you must turn yourself to Him and never, ever replace Him for no so-called gods of this world, because there are no gods. Did you like this? Would you like to hear it again? Listen to it as many times as you need until this content becomes part of you. Don't forget to leave your like, comment and share. See you next time.